Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as Andrew said, my name is James O'Brien. Ooh, these lights are bright. Can we turn down the lights? Oh. Um, I'm the founder and principal of Brooklyn Community Arts and Media High School, also known as, as the BCAM FAM. Um, we started four years ago, and we're up to four grades with 430 students. We believe that our students are in a high stakes 21st century where they simultaneously have access to every form of media and usually are on the cutting edge, but also are the most susceptible to being consumed by that media. So we use a three-pronged approach, academics, creative arts, and a professional development to try to support our students in building the skills that equip them to have a, a chance to succeed in, in college and in careers after high school. Before I begin, I, I gotta take care of two pieces of business. Um, so bear with me. First is to thank PopTech for uh, providing me the opportunity to, to be trained as a fellow. It's, it's been incredible. Um, the second order of business is hopefully someone in the BCAM community is watching this because it's being live streamed. Um, I say someone because Fridays at our school are Fresh Fridays, Get Fresh Fridays. Students have to wear a uniform shirt Monday through Thursday. And on Fridays, they get to dress how they want. And we're in the last three weeks towards a big fundraising set of events and party. And today is pajama day at B Camp. <laughs> so you don't know our community, but if you did, you'd know that pajama day will be never before seen like we do it at B Camp. So yesterday, when we were you know, hyping pajama day, and they said, what are you wearing? What are you wearing, Mr. O'Brien? And I said, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be at a conference. All I got back was, you lying. <laughs> you scared to wear pajamas. So I want to say hi to everybody. I'm here. I'm here. OK. I have pajamas on earlier, but now I'm suited up. So, um, so we, are, we are a small school in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York City, where they paint murals of Biggie, says Talib. Um, I'm going to click the next slide. Our students are like any set of students in any inner city across the country and, and even across the world. Um, we're an unscreened open enrollment school, so that means we're on the bottom tier of enrollment in the New York public schools. We have access to students who aren't selected for specialized schools, didn't audition, didn't take a, a screened exam. So our students run the gamut. Uh, they come in, some come in with college literacy levels and, and college skills already. Um, some come in with third and fourth grade literacy skills and, and academic skills. And then we have every place in between. Um, we have dominantly working class students, um, but then we also, as, as Brooklyn is and, and has been and continues to be, we have middle class students. So we have a diverse student population. There you see them. Those are my people right there. Um, We try to support our students, and, and we have to approach some, some real critical aspects in educating our students. Um, our students have a wide variety of skills, so we really have to take an approach that differentiates our education and meets their needs at all places. Uh, we have to, in New York, graduate with five regents exams passed, so we have to integrate in our curriculum a regents preparatory model so we combine that with our academic approach and our, our arts approach and our professional approach. Um, we have a contingent of students who come every year who haven't had great experiences at all with school, in elementary school and middle school. So they come alienated from school. They're not motivated. Their families are not motivated because their families have, have seen them not succeed in school. So we deal with students who aren't as hyped as we are to be educated. And, and we try to change that in partnership with them. Uh, and it is Bed-Stuy, New York. And as much as I love it, and as much as I really believe in it, some of our students do come with somewhat of a culture of, of crime and, and violence. Um, we have significant gang affiliations. So we, we don't deny that. We don't berate our students for you know, having that inside of them. We try to understand it with them. We try to give them different options. And again, we try to partner who they are as real people, not, not have any sort of complex that, that changes them. This is David Hollis. Um, 
That's young, fresh Dave to me, okay? I've known David for five years. He was one of our, our founding students. Um, he was one of the first students to, to enroll as he was an eighth grader. Um, that's an all-American looking young man right there. He's got our gym uniform on. That was yesterday when it was 75 in New York. It's not 75 here. Playing flag football at gym. Uh, David, he, he typifies a BCAM student. He's incredibly charismatic. He, he's a leader. Um, he's nice with the ladies. Uh, really, really smart and savvy in how he does things. I've, I've seen him lead million dollar foundations that have come visited our building and take them on a tour and talk to them as if he was an adult right there with them. Last spring, he was part of a 12 student group that went to Chicago for a culture and college uh, preparatory tour. And he, he's legendary in Chicago at this point because he, he led the whole group. He mixed with professors, with, with docents at the museums that they went to. And again, he was nice with the ladies. <laughs> David, though, also has another side to him. In fact, I'm going to go back. I'm sorry. Can I go back to David? Because uh, we're going to see him later on. We're going to come back to him. But all these compliments and, and are, are real. But David also has uh, a side that, um, that isn't nice with, with the community. Um, David is a, he's a felon. He already has a, a felon charge of robbery. Um, he's been superintendent suspended numerous times. He doesn't do well in, in formal academic classes. He has at best a C average and, and more like a D average. And he's, he's always been behind in his credits. Um, he doesn't pass all of his classes. But he's, he's caught up in, in the end. Um, I've sat with his mother till 1 a.m. in the morning, uh, bailing him out of jail. Um, I, I, and I really, I, I chose him on purpose. Um, I've had to go before a judge and plead with the judge to send him to spa for a juvenile home instead of Rikers uh, because I believe in him and because I believe that he's working out those parts of, of his identity. Um, so that, that's, a, that's a typical student, actually, um, not, not an anomaly. That, that's somebody with multiple ciphers, a, as we say. So um, we've created and are doing our best to continue to develop what we call the, the professional preparatory model at BCAM. Um, as I said, it integrates the, the three facets in an interdisciplinary way. I'm just going to run through them real quick um, and then get to what we're doing as we move forward. This slide takes a minute to load. So uh, our academics is really steeped in an inquiry model where we ask critical questions, where our students really push to connect whatever they're studying, whether it's in history, science, to real life, to real world issues, and to their own lives, and most important, to the communities that they live in. We want them to make sense of it. We don't want them to be grinding away at a textbook. Uh, we don't want them to be in the classroom if, if need be. We want them to be out and about making sense of things from a real perspective. That's what they want to do. That's what we want them to do. We also, as I said, we have to integrate that with the Regents exams. So it can't just be personalized performance-based education. And we really struggle with doing that. That's something that's a real challenge to us, to, to have them make, have a relevant education, but also pass the Regents, which is dominantly content and skills that, that they have to do. Uh, we bring the ruckus with an art curriculum. Um, it's something that I'm real proud of. Uh, we, art is considered an academic discipline at BCAM, so students essentially take a three-year art curriculum, which is unheard of in small, yes, yes. In small public schools, and especially with funding changes and funding cuts, art is really marginalized, as we know, and, and ironically enough, in New York City, the mecca of, of art. Um, but we do, we have two full-time art teachers who do a three-year curriculum that starts with fine arts and goes through a whole range of media arts. Um, they push students to have a critical analysis, so students aren't just doing arts for art's sake, but they're really analyzing the context and the impacts of art. Um, we also have an incredible elective program that provides students big school options in a small school setting where we contract community-based artists and educators from right in the Bed-Stuy, Clinton Hill, Fort Greene area to come into our school two days a week and teach four-credit classes that the students have to take. They have to you know, receive 
elective credit. And we also create structured schedule for our teachers where if they want to put on another hat, whether you're a science teacher, English teacher, and you want to teach an elective that you're really passionate about, you're able to do that. So I'm proud to say that this quarter we have 18 electives that students can self-select into, and they get to take four in a year. We take them in nine-week modules. So that really complements and provides them a whole range of opportunities to engage with the arts. Um, that, that picture right there, the ladies dancing, that's fit to fly. That's a, that's a dance aerobics. Um, once a quarter, we do what's called Night to Shine, where we invite our community, our families, our partners to come in and students demonstrate what they're learning. Not a polished show, not a choreographed show, but really demonstrating their talents in their academic classes and in their art classes. And then the, the third tier that, that's interconnected is we really push our students to engage in professional experiences through internships, through partnership projects with our great partners. And we, in all of our aspects, in our academic classes, in our art classes, and through those professional experiences, we push students to what, do what we call publishing and exhibiting. Um, so we push students to, to revise, to take things to full completion, whether it's a music studio beat, whether it's a piece of writing, whether it's a science experiment, at least two or three pieces in a semester are pushed to publishing. Um, we've had great success, and everybody's looking at the People magazine. Look close, because that's part of a branding campaign where they flip people on its ear and they made fun of it and, and all those, that, that's, that's a great design effort. By, but we've published two books, that's one of them in the middle, of student writing and student artwork. Um, we've made six, short films that are on our website, on YouTube, if you want to come check them out. We have two full CDs of, of 16 songs um, that, that we brought out with our mobile music studio that, that we use. And um, we've exhibited all over the place, and, and I'm really proud to say this. We've exhibited at MoMA, um, at the International Center of Photography at the Brooklyn Art Museum, uh, at BAM, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, and, and then finally, um, and I'm going to put a plug in, uh, they're making a documentary uh, about our school. A, a professional filmmaker uh, heard about our school and came and asked us if, if she could come and she could film. And she's partnered with a group of about 10 students, and they all have cameras. So she shoots from her angle, but she gives them free reign to shoot from their angle. So they're shooting a Verite-style verite documentary. Um, I don't know when it'll be out. And I do want to say that I have the trailer. I have about 10 C, you know, DVDs and, and a packet of information if you're interested in that afterwards. She was going to kill me if I didn't say that. Um, but she's a great filmmaker, and it is a great project. It's giving them the experience. And we're learning about ourselves. It's not altogether pretty at BCAM all the time. And she, you know, we're letting her shoot and letting the students shoot the warts and all of our school along with the successes that we have. There's David. Um, I, I want to show you just two examples of, of our work. Uh, as I said, David goes from the wholesome looking student. This was a graphic design poster that he had published and he accompanied it with a campaign speech. And it's actually an anti-violence campaign. So all those things I told you are, they're real about David. He's, you know, he's been locked up, he has a record, but his poster was anti-gun violence. Now there's, there's definitely some contradiction in that picture. Um, Yes, there's a slash through the guns, but it looks to me like the guns are a little bit glorified as a halo around his head. Um, the color red is not by accident. Um, David affiliates with the Bloods uh, in, in a somewhat of a fashion, so he's draped in blood colors, uh, blood gang. And he's not smiling right there. He's got a menacing look. Uh, so that's David uh, presenting himself and presenting his work where he is and making sense of it. And that's our style of work. Uh, our art classrooms allow students to express themselves, not, not to be indulgent and gratuitous, but that was a campaign poster that he did. And, and that's published. So that's in a book. So you can make sense of it how you will. The second, uh, this is the fun part. Um, the second part is, oh, can we stop it? Can we stop it for a second? I want to introduce it. Sorry, sorry, fellas. Um, this is a, a, an example of something that we hit a home run on, uh, the model that we really want to uh, ingrain in our infrastructure permanently. This is a collaboration between our school and one of our great partners, the Hip Hop Theater Festival. Where's Clyde? Clyde. 
Clyde. Clyde's the director of the Hip Hop Theater Festival. Please check them out. They're, they're a theater and culture arts organization in New York. Uh, we partnered with them and two artists, a filmmaker and a spoken word poet, to work with our students at the start of a project. And they put them in three different design teams, uh, a music and audio design team, uh, a, a spoken word and, and writing team, and then a graphics and, and visual production, film production team. And this, uh, it's, it's a music video, but it, it's, it's all from the students in every realm, A to Z, editing, writing, production, uh, you, you know, the whole nine. So I'm just gonna show the first verse. It's, you know, it's three verses, but we'll just show the first verse for a minute. So this is something that we're really proud of. Voice and hear the authenticity. Kids like myself get judged on our ethnicity, our simplicity, stereotypes from our history. Discriminators choose to look over all our victories. The blacks are the ones who put an end to segregation. The faces of the races left space for discrimination. I ain't trying to front, yo, I said a couple slurs. It's mistakes like that, don't let the mountain pot burn. What I want now is a reason. Helping protect us from itself. Now tell me, do we really need them? Nowadays, everybody reps red or blue. Ten-year-old brother told me he got bloods in the school. Next time you jump someone, think of what you put them through. Picture your mom's getting hit, looking at you. Back then, it was mostly the blacks doing the crimes. Now we gotta go through judgment for old times. I'm the one that shot you. I'm the one that bit your ear. I'm the one that robbed you. Got you walking around with it. What I want now is a reason. Weapon protect us from itself. Now tell me, do we really need them? Can we actually live the freedom? Stay away from all the reaping and the minatory creeping. They say the country's rich and we got money proceeding. But man, people starving. Tell me, why can't we feed them? I'm good, I'm good. One more minute, one more minute. Um, these are what we want to do next. This is our dream. Uh, we want students to start to specialize in an academic or artistic discipline, almost like they're in college, where they get to do a tiered approach and, and start basic and then end up as a specialist by, by their fourth year. Um, we, we do sporadic art projects based on partnerships, based on our curriculum. We want to push in the next year to require every student to do one that where they're in the community thinking about an issue and, and expressing in response to that issue and it goes into their graduation portfolio. Um, the third, that's my baby, okay? We're going for broke. We want students to get paid. We want students to develop entrepreneurial approaches, small businesses, be able to hustle their products that they make in our school and have that revenue come back into a bank account or an investment portfolio that they get to access when they graduate to prepare them and help them plan for their future. Um, if they don't graduate, I don't know what happens to the money. That's a you know, critical question, but we'll solve that a as we develop it. But we're really excited about that. The students are very excited about that. Um, we, we have one floor and four classrooms, uh, and we share a middle school building with three other schools. And we do all of this art and media through mobile studios, through locking stuff up in closets and bringing it out when, when we're doing stuff. Um, we want to have dedicated studios and labs. And then finally, we want to develop a nonprofit foundation side to our school so we can generate the funds that complement DOE funding and make sure that uh, our students continue this model and it doesn't get compromised as funding starts to get smaller. So we know what happens when all that happens. Students are motivated. Students can engage in their future. They have a stake in their education. They can complete high school. And we can give them a fighting chance to succeed in this high stakes uh, 21st century. Thank you, and thank you for the extra thank time. You. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's all right.